Woohoo! I can start early and then I can finish early. There we go. Uh, so who's a Java developer here? <laughs> That's not surprising, really. Who's not a Java developer here? There we go. What do you do? What do you Java? <laughs> no, you're joking. <laughs> nice. Is anybody a book author already published? Gertan at the back, yes. Uh, oh, nice. Maybe thinking about it. Not, Has published. not published yet. Have you dealt with a book? Are you talking to a book publisher already? No. Okay. Then you'll have that joy to do maybe one day. Um, that's, it's always interesting to talk to book, book publishers. Has anybody used the O'Reilly uh, system recently? Because that's quite, apparently it looks quite nice. Almost usable um, compared to uh, a lot of the other publishers. Uh, ooh, it's eight minutes. Well, I've got 50 minutes for my quickie. That'd be quite nice. I don't think that my timer is quite right there. Um, cool. Oh, we've got a box, a box of things, a box of glasses. Oh. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, I could drink, I could drink out of a glass and be proper instead of being, uh, instead of being northern. There we go. Does anybody write their own blog? Like tech blog or any other blog there? Do you use do you use WordPress? <laughs> do you like using WordPress? No. Oh, you're in the right talk then. <laughs> Excellent. What's wrong with self-publishing? Sorry? What's wrong with self-publishing? Um it's a little bit more setup. I think the, I mean, the, the, I, the basically the gist of the talk when I get going, oh, I've got 15 minutes. Uh, the gist of the talk is basically, um, so, well, certainly with blogging, you, you, can, uh, you can get started very quickly with WordPress, but when you want to customize things, then it, it can be a limiting factor as well. Um, with self-publishing, and when you're writing books, um, the way that a lot of publishers do it is it's very they, they they you have to write it in a certain way using certain tools you might have to I, last time i did uh a book for somebody they just wanted individual uh, uh microsoft word files for each chapter and then all the images separately as well and so you, it's it was a lot of effort to kind of you couldn't look at what the book looked like because everything had to be separate in separate artifacts whereas you can do it yourself you can, it's a lot easier and you can see what the results are before you actually publish it and you don't have to deal with other people's deadlines as well yeah exactly yeah yeah um but writing a pdf it, if you've got good tools is quite easy to do but if you don't have good tools then it's a little bit more tricky actually having a good PDF. And then obviously you don't necessarily want to just deliver it as a PDF as well. You might want to deliver it as a website and, and a Kindle um, and other things like that as well. So, uh, Ooh, that would be quite interesting. Yeah. You could probably... Some of us in academia have to use that. I'm sure, I'm sure there's an Emacs plugin that will uh, take Markdown or ASCII doc and generate LaTeX. But then you could just write it in LaTeX and generate it from there. I suppose that would be That's much more sensible. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I won't be covering LaTeX today, but uh, there we go. Um, I have dabbled with LaTeX in the past, but I'm not. I haven't really used it for a while. It does look look really, really interesting. It's very. I think the nice thing about Markdown is it's very lightweight, and ASCII doc is very lightweight as a as a way to create the content with having like the minimum of styling in it. Uh, LaTeX and uh, even more so with HTML and CSS adds a lot more. Uh, complexity and a lot more things to manage and think about. Uh, LaTeX not too bad, but uh, if you want to do maths, yeah, if you want to do maths. But there is there is some stuff in uh, some of the tools do support um, have plugins that allow you to kind of create maths uh, from sort of simpler expressions of those mathematical equations as well. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't done that sp specifically yet. So, oh, I think I'm supposed to start because I've got 40 minutes left. But I've already started, so I'll. Uh, I'll try and cover some of these things. And if you've got ask questions, then please feel free to go along. Um, so I don't really have slides, but uh, well, these are the slides. So uh, one of the reasons I don't, you, I haven't used a publishing company is that they have different priorities. They basically go to them with an idea of a book, and they say, "Yeah, deliver it in three, mo three months' time, uh, and uh, like a nice 300-page book in three months' time." And we want, uh, and they they will kind of 
chase you for that book as well. So you put you under a lot of pressure to deliver a book on the time frame that you want to. So if, if things happen in your life, then yeah, they, uh, they do kind of uh, added stress of actually writing a book when you want to just focus on writing the content as well. So self-publishing, you don't have that stress. You can do it in, in your own time frame uh, and your own speed. And you can set your own prices as well and you get uh, pretty much most of the money back as well. So I use um, a, a tool called uh, Gitbook.io, but there's uh, plenty of other tools out there as well. There's LeanPub and, and Read the Docs and so on, uh, for depending on what you're doing. Uh, the nice thing about um, Gitbook.io is it's, you, can take, uh, you have a choice whether you want to use their marketplace to sell your books. Um, so they, they do have their own uh, marketplace. So you can basically go on there. You can do it all on online. They've got an editor you can actually use uh, to build it. You sign up with your Git's, uh, Git account. It's linked up to your GitHub account as well. Uh, so it's all managed in a way that you're kind of familiar for a developer. Um, but uh, you, what you can also do is publish that to anywhere else. Because it's basically you're writing Markdown and you're going to generate that into like a website and a PDF and into uh, Kindle formats and that sort of stuff as well. Uh, and it's pretty simple to set up. There's a few things to set up, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, and there's lots of plugins as well to make it even more enga engaging content, especially on the, um, on the website. So this is just a kind of a quick guide to how to set it up. So Gitbook.io is, uh, is a Node app, so you just basically install uh, install Node and then install Gitbook CLI. It's just a package you install. Uh, and then you can create uh, a new book. Uh, and essentially what you're doing is just, you, all you need is a readme and uh, a summary file, and then it will just create the book. And the summary file contains a, uh, a book structure. So uh, you d again, you define this in uh, Markdown. So this is all Markdown code. and. So you've got the, uh, the section title and then the file that holds the content for that section title as well. So it's pretty simple. And you can basically, uh, yeah, you can reorder the, the book and the website and stuff just by reordering and, and adding and changing uh, the structure as well. So if we go into uh, Emacs, um, so here's my summary for uh, the workshop I'm doing tomorrow, which I'm writing all in, in um, uh, Markdown. And I can very easily just move things around and that way, I can kind of change um, what, it, what I'm doing with that uh, structure. So it's very easy to, uh, and then just basically generate it based on, this generates a whole navigation for the book. Uh, so on the website, it generates a whole navigation pages. Uh, and for the actual PDF, it will just generate all the sections. And it will give me something like, uh, when I find it, where did I put it? Uh, oops, I've gone past it, sorry. There we go. So this is the, the actual um, uh, site that um, I've actually published live. And so it, all, the, all the things in the, um, in the summary markdown file is, is created the, the, the main sections of this book. And then I can navigate through there, and um, each section will open up into its own uh, subsections. Um, so here, the sort of navigation is automatically collapsing and, and expanding for me as well. So it's very easy to create a website. I didn't need to do this uh, in any JavaScript or anything. It's already there. I'm just writing the, uh, the layout of the book in Markdown and writing the content of the book in Markdown as well. And um, you, can, you, can drop in, um, you can drop in HTML in here as well if you want to do fancy things. But there's lots of plugins to, like again, avoid having to write anything other than Markdown, usually. And um, uh, yeah, you can, you can um, also add in uh, things like uh, this discussion uh, section, which, again, I haven't had to add anything to the content of the book to do this. It's just a plugin that I'm adding. And so when it generates uh, this website, uh, it will um, create this, uh, content sec uh, this comment section on each page for me. And um, it's like having it as part of the layout of the actual book. And so, but obviously, when it's going to generate the PDF, then there's no point putting a, a comment section in there because it's not a live website. And so uh, the plugins help you keep the content nice and simple, nice and clean. Uh, and then you can just version that 
uh, markdown content into, into Git or some other version control system as well. And it makes it very easy for you to, uh, to manage your content, but also for other people to collaborate around that as well. Uh, any questions so far? It all seems pretty simple. Cool. Uh, OK. Uh, so, so once you've done the summary, so you start, you basically generate the, the book by just using uh, a git book init. So once you've installed the, the tool, it just gives you all these command lines you can run. Um, and uh, yeah, you basically just add, as you're developing the book, you add sections to the summary file. Uh, and then you just, uh, if you want to see what the book looks like locally, you just do git book serve. And it will serve up, it'll run a little server, and you can see what the book looks like. So before you publish it uh, live, you can see what the book looks like locally and, uh, and see if it actually makes sense and maybe tweak a few things around. And, you can, uh, and then you can finally build the application. So you have a, like a static site, so you can put that into a web server, or you can, you can distribute that as well. I use GitHub Pages. Has anybody used GitHub Pages already for anything? A few people. So GitHub Pages, so uh, you just have a, a repository, but you give that repository the, the name of um, your, uh, your account or your organization. So if I do GitHub, and I go in there. So I, I, run, my, I run my blog off uh, jrocket.github.io. And so that's a, a, like a website I can go to. Uh, basically runs my... Um, jrockets.co website, because I also do my website as a static thing, so it's the same kind of process, but with a slightly different tool. And so Git, Git Book Pages allows me to deliver sort of static content really, really fast. Uh, and it's all powered by a content delivery network as well. So if you've got, even if you've got big images, then uh, they'll still be served pretty quickly uh, around there as well. So this is the uh, this is the live website. It work, it runs really fast. It's loading in images and it's really really snappy. Um, and that's just as fast locally when I'm doing that when I'm writing it. And and also when I'm writing when I save the pages, the local website I run will also pick up those changes, so I can instantly see what it is I'm looking at. If I want to if I want to tweak things, I can have the the content and the the generated content side by side and see how it's changing, and it will automatically refresh as well. Uh, and then, um, what else do I do? Oops. Uh, yeah, so I do have a Gitbook. I haven't found a, a nice way to do uh, deployment uh, from Gitbook uh, to uh, GitHub pages, but you can use the Gitbook service itself. That's mainly where it's focused. But you can just write, I just wrote a little script to basically deploy. Uh, exactly how you do it. So it's basically just doing, um, it's creating a new repository and then just basically pushing it, pushing up a change, doing a, a minus force there. So it's a bit of a bit of a naughty way to do it, but uh, it's uh, it's doing something that it, it's, it should really write a plugin to do that as well. My um, for for writing the blog, oh, I'm writing the book. Uh, for writing the blog, I have I use a tool called Hexo, which which will automatically it just has a plugin to deploy to get a book pages as well. So if you've never written, has anybody done Markdown before? A few people. Uh, so if you've not seen it before, it basically just is uh, text. Um, we have tiny little kind of bits of syntax to just add some style to it, or to add some structure, really. And then Gitbook itself will lay on a style based on the structure. So if you put a hash and a space in, in front of something, that makes it a heading. And you can make uh, subheadings as well. Uh, if you want to have a link, you can basically put uh, the the name of the link in square brackets, and then the the actual link itself, either like a relative path or a, a URL. Afterwards, in round brackets, and same with images, you do the same kind of thing, um, but you put a little exclamation mark in. So it's quite low um, uh, low ceremony um, syntax you need to do to be able to structure your code. Uh, you can also wrap this in a uh, square brackets as well and make your images uh, linkable as well. And, and you can do source code highlighting as well. Um, so uh, I've got some examples of that on my blog as well. And there's also some really nice um, plugins that I use. And to do the plugins is quite simple. You just basically have a, um, a configuration file for Gitbook. Uh, which is called book.json. 
and so it's made it a little bit bigger. So it's just basically a simple JSON file uh, with the version title of the book. And then you can also override some of the styles uh, from the themes as well, just uh, by hacking some of the CSS stuff if you wanted to. And then I just add plugins there. Um, so here I've got uh, yeah, toggle chapters, so it will close the chapters when I'm not looking, hide the subheadings, subchapters when I'm not looking at it. Um, and section X, which uh, again allows us to do uh, these little, um, if I'm doing a little exercise, um, oops, we can pass it. Uh, yeah, I do a little exercise so you can hide sections of the, of the content. So if you've got little uh, questions uh, and answers, you can hide those. Oh, it doesn't show up very well in there. Uh, you, can hide, you can hide the sections of the code. So if you want, um, you want to do a quiz or you like, ask them a base piece of code, you can hide that as well. So there's lots of, of like, neat little plugins you can do. And I, again, I haven't had to include anything special uh, so much. It kind of minimizes how much stuff you have to put any JavaScript in there. It just, you just basically put a line around the, the code to actually identify a section that's going to collapse. It's quite nice, uh, nice and simple. Ooh, got three minutes left. Um, and, yeah, and, and same thing for the discussions. It's just basically adding a uh, a discussions and just configuring. It. And you just basically use this discuss. I just use this discuss service, uh, which is a, a shared service. You can reply to any website, and you just put your uh, your short name in there in the configuration file, and it does everything else. So you don't need to do anything in your content to do that. So it keeps it nice and simple. Um, uh, it's cool. And I think that's about it. Then you just have to decide how much you actually want to uh, you want to actually uh, charge for your book. If you want to give it away for free, so I usually publish my workshops just f uh, for free on uh, Git book pages. Then I uh, put the discuss in so I can get some feedback and then continually improve that workshop. I can also um, you know also sell the books on. Um, uh, through things, through services like uh, uh, Gitbook and through um, uh, and through uh, the uh, LeanPub service as well, and so these services just take a small percentage to be able to like sell your book, and so uh, you can distribute them into a wider marketplace, or you can just sell it on your own website as well. I mean, if you there's no there's no kind of uh, limitations the way you can do it, uh, so it's quite nice and simple. Uh, so that's about me. That's all I've got to cover. If there's any questions, I've got about a minute left. Uh, I'll, I'll also be around for the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there any questions? Um, I haven't seen anything, but it wouldn't surprise. I'm not sure how you would do it in XML. You put, I mean, there must be some generators that would come. So, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so Markdown is really nice and simple, but uh, the, you want to generate other formats, for example, XML. Um, I'm not sure about XML itself, but uh, uh, I know I've seen people generate other stuff from, from Markdown. It's got a, base, it's got a simple uh, structure, so you, anything else that's got a fairly simple structure should be fairly easy to do. Uh, if you've got a complex XML structure, you basically have to have like a style sheet to, to translate it as well. But it should be possible, but I haven't seen anything specifically around there. Uh, my time's up flashing. Uh, so again, thanks very much for my quickie. And uh, if you're around tomorrow and you want to do some closure, I'll be doing a workshop using Gitbook and obviously Emacs as well. Thank you. <laughs>